Welcome to another episode of the 5-Minute Money Manager. Nothing takes the wind out of your desire to follow your spending plan than that insurance bill you forgot about. Therefore, it is also important to account for all of your non-monthly expenses. Insurance, medical, birthdays, holidays, vacations, dues, subscriptions, back to school, car repairs, and so on. In planning for non-monthly expenses, one of the hard parts is coming up with a realistic dollar amount to set aside each month. Previous year's spending records can help in this process. Also, a yearly calendar with each non-monthly expense listed by month will lessen any surprises. After you have made a complete list of your non-monthly expenses along with your best estimate of their dollar amounts, total all of the amounts to arrive at a total for the year. For this example, the total for the year is $4,800. Dividing by 12 gives an average monthly amount of $400. Of course, your numbers may be more or less than this. The monthly amount of $400 is the minimum amount that you would need to set aside each month to meet your non-monthly expenses. I say minimum because if this is the first year of your spending plan and you don't already have some money saved to act as a cushion, the timing of your non-monthly expenses may not match your accumulated set-aside savings. For example, let's say you start your spending plan the 1st of December and calculated your monthly set-aside to be the $400 per month in this example. But in December, you have holiday spending, some birthday spending, and some medical bills that come to $600. Now, even with the $400 set aside, you will be down $200 in December if you spend according to your plan. How are you going to handle this? Some of you might be thinking, so much for a spending plan. I knew it wouldn't work. However, you really only have three choices. Four, if you count some combination of the three choices. One, you could use $200 worth of credit, which then creates debt, and that impacts your future spending. And one of the reasons we put a spending plan together in the first place is so that we wouldn't have to go into debt. So that option is usually not a very good option. The second option would be to increase your income by $200, which isn't always possible, but maybe during the holidays you could get a temporary part-time job and earn that extra $200. The third option, which is what most people end up doing, is trying to trim your expenses by $200. In this case, you would want to consider all of your monthly spending and look at things that you can reduce. Uh, for example, maybe you can reduce on uh, food. Uh, maybe that uh, month of December you'll have to cut back on chips or something. Uh, maybe you could reduce eating out. Maybe you can reduce entertainment. Maybe you can reduce the actual holiday and birthday spending that you were planning on. Whatever the case, you would need to trim enough to come up with that $200 difference. Now at this point you might decide that uh, you're going to do the, a fourth option, which I didn't give you, and that is to throw your splen a spending plan out the window. The problem with that is even if you decide you don't want to ever see a spending plan again, you're still left with the same problem. You're down $200 for December. However, if you are consistent with your monthly spending uh, set aside amount and are diligent in not spending more than you've set aside, the balance in the set aside savings will begin to grow to the level needed to handle the non-monthly expenses as they come due. And usually this happens within the first year. Remember that your spending plan is there to help your daily living become less stressful and more enjoyable. So don't give up. 
Thanks for listening and have a great day.